A few weeks ago, I started hearing people talk about a church called St. Roderick's. It's a small church east of Mill Street, built back when that part of town was considered well off. Now the area is one of the city's many slums, and the church ministers to the poor who live there. Ditchers, water carriers, and beggars alike. Not the kind of place I'd normally pay a visit to. But according to what I overheard at the local tavern, some kind of holy relic, a shard of the master builder's true hammer, or some such thing, found its way to the church. There's nothing like a shard of the true hammer to part a righteous fool from his money. Every market has at least one for sale. But this story is a little more interesting. Apparently, when this relic was put next to the church's statue of St. Lucia, the statue started weeping blood. Word spread, and the faithful have been flocking to the church to see it. Apparently, the archbishop himself plans to visit St. Roderick's, to witness the statue weeping and decide whether it is an authentic miracle. The local priest isn't waiting, however, and is already proclaiming to one and all that the statue is a sign from God. No surprise. The little church is suddenly making more in tithes and donations than it knows what to do with. Not everyone is happy about this miracle, though. A messenger representing an opposing interest has offered me a fair sum of money to steal this relic. That and vandalize the weeping statue before the archbishop's visit. My bet is some rival priest is jealous at all the newfound wealth St. Roderick's is earning. I'm supposed to make it look like a common burglar which means I can help myself to the tithe box and any other loot I can find lying around. This would be an easy job, except that some cathedral guards are already patrolling the church in preparation. The front gate is likely to be guarded, so I may have to look for a less obvious route into the church. And smashing the statue without drawing any attention is going to be a challenge in itself. I don't get the other half of the money until the job is done, however, so I'll have to come up with something. Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Games to Play in the Dark. This is the Dark Mod, um, playing the episode called The Statue, The Tears of St. Lucia. And I'm playing it on Expert. So I'm going to load out my equipment. And in this level you really don't need a whole lot. Um, I found it easy, but I got a little bit of gold to play with, so I'm going to get this flash bomb, a moss, couple of noisemakers, all the water arrows, and I have five gold left. I really don't need those broadhead arrows though, so don't plan on killing anybody. Alright, so the mission starts off downtown at this area right here. It's beautiful to look at. There's uh, a bar called the Baron Belcher that you can enter right here. And there's one treasure inside. Um, there's nothing in this room here. You move along there's a drunkard here, he's not going to bother you. There's a readable here that leads you to another readable, which leads you to the key. But I already know where it is, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to continue on. There's nothing in this back room here. Um, in the original version of St. Lucia, there was a, a wine bottle back there, but now it's gone. And the key that you want to find is in that vase up on the ledge there. So the quickest way to get up there is to climb up on the sign, mantle up, jump up onto the lamp post, and then crouch down and move towards that little corner there. And when you hook, get hooked on it, you can move along the wall, and you can stand up. And if you can try to get the... Uh, vase to not light up. Sometimes you can grab the padlock key right out of it, like I just did. All right, so we move along. Rats come scurrying out onto that wagon. You need to turn down this alley here. There's a barrel and a pipe. That you can both mantle onto. Uh, I'm stuck. There we go. And across the way is the window. So jump to that ledge another readable here. It's not very interesting, but if you want to read it, go right ahead. There's some coins here on the lamp, on the dresser, and under the bed there's a there's a, oh, a gold goblet. If you can see it just under the bed there, grab that. 
and turn my lantern off and move on. That's everything you need in that room. Alright. Uh, I love the ambient sound effects in this game. Alright. In this area, you can push this pallet away to get in. Push the pallet over a couple of times. Climb on in. There's really nothing in here except for a beggar warming himself over the fire and a broadhead arrow. Uh, it looks like there's a way up there, but you can't get up there, unfortunately. It's just a prop. Uh, it's just a, you know, little flavor. So, um, you can pull this uh, board off the door to unlock it, but it's really not that important. So, just go in out the same way you came in. All right. The room where we're trying to get to with the the padlock key is in here, but I want to move on just a little bit to show you a few things um, down in this area of the level. Um, there's a place in the sewer that comes out at that big pipe there, and uh, the uh, the second breadcrumb of that paper trail is right here under this rock, and that tells you where to find the key. But again, since I already know where to find the key. It's pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Now, there's nothing in this area of town. There's no treasures. There's no. Um, there's really no readables except for this thing saying about the miracle. Um, and then you come around this corner here. Tis not for me to question Brother talking. Reynold, but it doth seem that there is not but rats and beggars and if you to look careful, guard you against. You can see his shadow, so you don't want to go any further in that direction. So, there's really nothing over here, as I said, but it's nice to look at. It's a very well laid out um, cityscape. And the way into the sewer is coming up. It's right in here. Sometimes you gotta crouch your way in. There we go. And you turn on my lantern so I can see. And up above, there's a up here. You just throw the boards off, click on the board, and push it away. Turn in this uh, direction so that you can reach the ledge and pull yourself up. And over here you'll find a coin purse and a stack of coins. There. Now the trap door is under this junk. It's a box on top of it, a chair, a pallet. Let's get this stuff out of my way. And then use the key you found earlier to unlock the padlock. Oops. If you're standing on top of the trap door, it's not going to open. Alright, so the ladder is on this side, so face that way and climb yourself down. And I'm in the sewer. There's really not a whole lot down here. It's a very clean sewer <laughs> by sewer standards and there's more to the sewer that you can explore yourself there's really no treasure down there so I'm gonna skip over it and go right into the level itself do that by going through this water tunnel it's out here and then down this tunnel and up a chimney thing This leads you into the church itself, but I'm in the lower levels. Duck under pipes, climb up into this area. Now, if you turn this way, you see a bunch of vines. You can walk through them, and you'll find a dead rival with a gold a gold ring and some broadhead arrows. Continue on through. These side passages really don't lead anywhere except for a dead ends. So you just continue on. And there's another set of vines across the way there. There's something in that area as well. This leads to an abandoned storage area, I guess. And up the ladder. And if you hear that noise, that was a spider. So there's a spider down in this little alcove here. And it's not really going to bother you as long as you kill it from here. 
take out the spider. And you're good to go. Let's get my lantern back on again. And there's a gold plate. That's pretty much it for this area. Just climb back up on the barrels. And mantle your way up onto the ledge. Get over the wagon. Back down the ladder. Alright. So going back the way we came. Continue forward. And when you come to the vines, you're going to go down this time. And it leads into the sewer. Just run right through. Uh, there's a door here leads to a machine room, but it's empty. There's no treasure. And then there's a second door that leads to this room. Which you can see a uh, uh, readable on the uh, corkboard there, but it it explains that there's someone working on the privies down here, and uh, that he's supposed to bring the ladder back up when he's done, but he didn't do that. So it's just a little flavor, to, you know, let you know how you're supposed to get in. Uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward. This is the privy area. You can look up, and the ladder is over in this corner. Turn off the lantern because there might be someone in the next room. And out you come. Oh. Ah, and I fell. Not good. Uh. All right. Mantle up, and first thing I do is shut off this candle because there could be the priest coming along soon. Now this is a good place to save. So after saving your game, you can move on into this hallway, pull out your trusty lock pick, and pick this door here. And come into this room here. I leave the door open just a little bit so you can hear. Grab that. There's a readable on the desk. Coin purse, a gold wine bottle, and some coins. And a treasure chest. The treasure chest is picked with a snake lock pick. And it opens to reveal some armor and a goblet. The armor you can't do anything with. So, moving along. Two guards and one priest walking around in this area. So be sure to take them out carefully. your ear up to the door. back to you. Now, the person I'm really waiting for is the priest, because he has a key on his belt that I need. Just patiently wait for this door to open. Okay. 
his eminence doth find this pleasing. That sounds like the priest. Holy Father, blessed be thy hands and tools. Indeed. The flame is out already? <coughs> Good. With him unconscious. There's only one more left. While I'm waiting, open the door to this room. Make sure you close it all the way. This is an important door. The guard will respond. There's a readable on the desk here. And I'll put this light out right while I'm here. Just to make it easier for him not to see me when I'm in the doorway. Alright, there's a couple of readables on the desk. And a pile of coins. And a holy relic. A second key. And behind this vase here is a secret switch. Opens up this cubby hole with a massive treasure chest. You gotta pick this lock by sound only, there's no sight. It's triangle snake snake. Triangle snake and snake. This is where the actual main treasure you're looking for is, and there's a bunch of other stuff in there as well. Sometimes you got to play around with your uh, view to make sure that it's centering it. There. Ooh, no. There. Now I'm done. All right. Make sure I'm there. All right, so let's move along. Let's go for that other guard. Stay up against the wall here with your blackjack at the ready. Knock him unconscious, and you can just leave him here. Nobody's gonna find him. Come into this dining room area, and you're pretty much free to search at your leisure now that he's unconscious. And up on the top of this here, this painting, there's a couple of hidden gems in the eye sockets, and there's a couple of readables on the. Uh, big dining room table, but other than that, there's really not a whole lot more in this room. So let's continue searching the area. And down here leads to the crypt, which I will go down into now, just for fun, because there's a lot of treasure down here. Sometimes crouch at the door. He, oh, he's right there with his back to me. <coughs> that guard's done. You don't have to worry about him. Nobody else is coming down here. And start robbing the dead. There's a lot of treasure down here, and it's easy to miss stuff, so pay attention. There's four goblets in this little cubby. And then turn your lantern on to help you search. Come over here. There's a knife and a relic in the corner. You see it much better when you have the lantern on. 
and there's ladders along the sides here. There's a couple little cubbies up there that you can search, but there's nothing in those. But there is one up here. But, oh, look at this uh, cracked sarcophagus. Jump on top of it, crouch down, and there's a necklace on the corpse. And that means I got enough treasure to s beat the level, but I still haven't found everything yet. So there's the knife, and then you climb up this ladder here. And there's another necklace out here. Sometimes you gotta be a little tricky to get. There you go. Lean out and grab it. Nothing up that ladder. And if you come into this third area, there's another ladder. And there's a statue. So I believe that's everything in this area. So let's move along. There's an elevator right here that leads up two different floors. Let's call that down right now. There's a chimney here, but it really doesn't lead anywhere. It's, there's no way to climb up it. Let's just wait for the elevator. And we'll go up to two now. And I'll go up to three in a minute, but I want to search this area first. Lord Builder, There's a bless my hands and my tools, over here with that I might do great works in thy name and for thy glory. Ah. Stuff. He's unconscious, and then there's two of these uh, gold statue things, and a couple of readables in the room. There's another room over here with nothing in it, so we can move on and we'll finish searching this floor. And then I'll move to the other room. There's a couple of little closets off the side here. It has a gold, uh, a gold bangle in the back there. Gold bangle and a water arrow in that one. And in the second one, there's a health potion down on the bottom here. And I'll bring my health back up. All right, in this area, there's a kitchen. There's a couple of gold uh, wine bottles and a broadhead arrow sticking out of this goose. And there's a couple of readables, mostly recipes and stuff. There's also this little um, vent that you can crawl up into, but there's really nothing up there. I didn't find that area to be very interesting at all. And I think that's it for this floor. Yep, that's the way I got down. So let's go take that elevator all the way up back through this area. Let's go up all the way. Okay, I found this odd that there's a, a trash heap at the top of uh, a big structure, but hey, it's a couple of broadhead arrows, and if you look closely, there's a wine bottle. There's a readable later on in the level that tells you that's there, but if you look carefully enough, you can see it yourself. All right, and come out here, drop down here. There's another guard. I'm going to save before I try to knock him out. And sneak up on him. <coughs> and you could just leave him here. That's pretty much it. You can continue down this area. It'll lead you to the graveyard and the entrance to the church. But there's really no treasure or anything. I just knocked him out so he doesn't get in my way when I try to make my escape later. So climb back up in here. Look up and climb mantle back up. And you're back up on the third floor. So let's go back down to the second floor and continue on. All right. So finally, we got this room here, which is very, very brightly lit with those doors there that I gotta get through. And I really don't like being in a lit room. So this is the time I'm gonna pull out my trusty water arrows and take out all the lights in this room. You aim at the chain, top of the chain, and the rain will knock out the lights. Take out the two tiki torches. And now the room is in complete darkness and you can make your way into the next room without being seen. Because there's two guards in here. And they're usually always facing in this direction. So they're kind of easy to take out. I'll take the key first. so the other guard doesn't see him. And I 
leave him over in the corner here usually. Just wait for the other guard to come along. Stay away from the light. He's going to come up and he's pretty much going to stand in the same exact position as the other guy. take the goblet and the book. And the book is just flavor again. And that's it for this area. Um, over here is the readable that tells you about that wine bottle in the midden heap. It's right here, but I don't really need it at the moment. Let's creep along into this area. There's a guard in the next room, but he's not bothering me now. Grab pretty much all this stuff from this room, which is these two gold plates. And I gotta get up to that walkway in a minute or two, but first I wanna take out the guard in the next room. So the best thing to do is turn off these candles. Yeah, it makes the room nice and dark into the vestibule, because I have the vestibule from one of those guards. And here we see the statue of St. Lucia. This guard is kind of a dunce. Just wait for him to walk away. Save. <coughs> Take both keys from him and knock him out. And when he's unconscious, just leave him in this corner here. Oh. Him up. All right, come around the sides here, and there's a vase in the statue. There's a vase in the other one on the other side. Vase. And that's pretty much it. There's the one guard left who's uh, guarding the uh, main entrance. And he's not coming in unless something happens. So I'm pretty much free to explore the place. Grab all this treasure. There's plates. Oops. Gold plate. Gold goblet. Up on top of this barrel is another couple of plates. Take those two. That's it. And then we just move into this room again. Let's climb up above. There's a readable over on that door, by the way, that just uh, tells you that the door is not supposed to be open. We climb up here, past this instruments and stuff, and we're on the walkway. So run along. And I should have the spare walkway key unlock that. And, oh, I forgot one more thing. Let me go back down. There's one more little treasure I forgot about. In here. And it's up this ladder here. You can see it better with the lantern. Climb up this ladder, and if you lean here, you can see a gem next to that hammer sometimes a little tricky to get. There it is. Got to try to center it on your view. Alright, so that's done. And this is the statue we're here to destroy, so we're going to go up to that ledge and we're going to drop a hammer on it. Climb the ledge. Climb up here, up this this work area, and 
and see the big hammer just sitting there on the ledge. We're going to use the physics of the dark mod and we're going to push this hammer real hard. Just keep pushing against it and it'll start to move. And it'll move faster and faster until you get it here and then just drop it. And it crunks the statue's head. Turn off my lantern because this is going to send that other guard coming. There he comes. But he has no idea where I'm here. And that's it. He's going to continue searching the room while I make my escape. should be it. Just run back down this through the city. And once you get to about this point, the mission ends. treasure and my stealth score was seven so all in all i think i did pretty good so thank you for watching and enjoy